All week long, we've been talking about weather in space because it is Space Week. And all morning long, meteorologist Jen Carfagno has been reporting live from the Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado. That's where she's joining us right now with the guest. Jen, will you let us know what's going on there? <laughs> You know, Chris, it is so fascinating. Space weather isn't the kind of weather that you need an umbrella for. But I'm bringing you a space weather forecaster, Megan Stockman. Uh, and Megan, the kind of space weather we're talking about is not the kind of wind that's going to blow your trash can down, right? Right. This is not something that you're going to feel physically. So we have to be able to explain exactly to our customers what, what it is, what it means to them. So you work here in Boulder at the Space Weather Prediction Center. Right. And you're looking at pictures of the sun. Yes. All day long. All day. Uh, well, tell me what you're looking at. We've got great images behind us. OK. Um, on the far left, the red and green images over there are what we call Stereo A and Stereo B spacecraft. And that's kind of our first and third base look if you think so of the Earth as home. these are spacecraft out there taking pictures of the sun. Exactly. How far away from the sun are exactly. they? Exactly. So the middle image here is um, you can see there's a void in the middle, and that's blocking out the sun so that we can see the corona. And if you see right now, there's an explosion that goes out. And this what, is live, right? That's live. So we have something we have to determine whether that's headed towards Earth or away from Earth, and that's what the stereo spacecraft are good now, for. Now, what about the black and white? Because we were looking at that earlier. There, there's something happening there. Right. The black and white, it, we have um, a coronal mass ejection that has occurred, and that means that it's some a plasma cloud that is heading towards the Earth. And as it spreads out through space, we can see it around the occulting disk, and that's called a halo CME. All right, so is that a problem for us, let me ask? Um, it could be in a couple of days, and that's what our forecasters will determine. They'll see how fast it's moving, when they think it will arrive, and how long the um, storm should last and how, what that will, how that will affect us. So on the big image of the sun, that's, that's literally just a picture of the sun, right? Right. Where do we get that from? We get that from the Solar Dynamics Observatory from NASA, and um, it's a great visual. It shows us where the active regions are, and also shows us when uh, there's a solar flare, we can see where what region that came from and give us a good all starting right. point. So you guys take all that and then you make a forecast, and that's what's up here. How much advance notice do we get when it comes to making a forecast? For our geomagnetic storms, we get probably it's hours to days. So the fastest on record is 17 hours, but generally it's more like three or four days. So we have a model just like we have weather prediction models. You have space weather prediction models. Exactly. So what it does is it projects that plasma cloud as it spreads out through space, um, kind of like if you push your hand through water, it spreads out. We need to know if we're going to catch any of that wave. All right, real quickly, your background? My background is terrestrial weather, actually. Meteorology. And then, that's right. All and right. then just a little bit of space interest. Megan, thank you so much.